Going now into our first interview on today's show, how to have a meaningful and productive conversation with your teen on the subject of mental health. I know the importance of this has only gone up in recent years. And so this morning, as May is Mental Health Awareness Month, we are getting more serious about it than ever. So joining me now to help tackle the root of this issue and provide practical steps that you can take as a parent is Dr. David Barnhart with Behavioral Sciences of Alabama. Dr. David, thank you so, so much for being here and for the work that you do. Anybody will tell you that mental health, we know, has become increasingly more of an issue in recent years. Some of the statistics that you actually just sent me, so incredibly shocking. In 2021, 29% of students reported having experienced poor mental health. 10% you say actually attempted suicide, which even just saying those numbers is disturbing. I'm curious for what you think as an expert in the field is the root cause of this issue, right? Because I've kind of heard two different arguments. One I've heard is that parents aren't giving their kids enough attention, right? But then kind of on the flip side of that, it's like, no, actually parents are giving their kids too much attention and we're kind of creating this self-focused society. Where do you think you kind of fall on that debate or, or is there another root topic that you think is at play? Well, I think it, every individual is an individual. Yeah. And so I think it's hard to look at a group and make a, make a decision about how it is. It's really about the individual. So kids do better if they have a good connection with their parents, mm -hmm. if they're accepted by their parents, if their parents are able to listen to what they have to say. Mm -hmm. So we encourage open communication. Um, our tendency as parents, and I am a parent, yeah. and I'm a grandparent, I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. So it's, sometimes our tendency is we wanna know what's going on, and so we'll get into a, asking a lot of questions that are like 20 questions. Mm -hmm. And that can be kind of intimidating uh, for kids, and the natural tendency is like, have you done your homework? Mm. <laughs> uh, is is to be have a defensive response. Kind of more interrogating questions. And yeah. I think that part of what we don't understand well enough yet as parents, information really hasn't gotten out there, but when we ask questions like that, it, the brain is so fast to respond in a defensive way. 40 to 140 milliseconds, it's wow. very quick. By the time we're consciously aware of what's happened, it's closer to a half a second. Wow. So we're, even our conversation is not in real time, it just seems like it is. Yeah, it's that's a so little, interesting. Yeah, we're like playing it back to ourselves. That makes it very difficult to change behavior. Yeah, so with that, Dr. Barnhart, I mean, again, you've mentioned open-ended questions. You actually said, you know, instead of saying, uh, how was school today, what kind of questions should parents kind of flip that for? Well, tell me, tell me where your headspace is today. Tell me, tell me what you're thinking about. Okay. Or what was the best thing? that happened to you today to, okay. to be, uh, get a little more specific and more not specific. put them on a defensive uh, right away. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've been in school all day, six, seven hours, and then you go home, do you want to jump on homework right yeah, away? Yeah, not necessarily I mean, by I any means, yeah. I don't want to go to work as soon as I get home. Mm -hmm. And I think most adults are that way. We, we want a little mental break. We want to be able to relax and uh, be at ease, be able to breathe a little bit, yeah. and, then, and then we can handle things. Sure, so kind of a break in the topic, and then like you said, those more specific questions, which I do mm -hmm. love, because I think it's so easy, you know, how was school today? Good, you know, but say, what was the best thing that happened to you today really causes a child specific. to pause and think and, yeah. and get specific. Loving that, Dr. Barnhart. One thing I also did want to ask, and you know, moderately switching gears here, but it's a topic that you brought up that I want to address, because it's something that um, I'll tell you I personally struggle with, I know a lot mm -hmm. of people struggle with, OCD. This has really become uh, more of a present conversation. What have you seen in your field of study and how can we continue to work to address that? Well, I'm excited that you're able to say that. Yeah, to, uh, I do. Public, yeah. that is so good because we, we deal with stigma around all kinds of mental disorders and most people don't really understand what obsessive compulsive disorder is, OCD. Mm -hmm. we, we do an intensive treatment program uh, here in Huntsville and Aggressive, intrusive, obsessive, uh, intrusive thoughts that are unwanted are, mm -hmm. are frequent occurrences. Har a fear of harming yourself or harming somebody else mm -hmm. can, be, can be an issue. There are, gosh, religious obsessions and there are contamination. People are often familiar with um, 
cleaning and straightening and that kind of thing. But OCD isn't about just being a little bit tidy. Yeah, certainly not. It is really a very, can be a very debilitating uh, disorder. Yeah, very much so. Well, again, Dr. Bernhardt, I, I want to personally thank you for the role that you play in helping people. I mean, you are changing lives here in this area, so thank you so much. Just as we wrap up here, recap for us again, Alabama Behavioral Sciences, tell us where you are, where people can learn more for people who are struggling with yeah. either OCD or whether it be something else, where yeah. can we get help? So, yeah, Behavioral Sciences of Alabama is on Shoney Drive, which connects to the uh, parkway. Uh, it's just on the south of uh, south of here so Wonderful. About, about six minutes south to be honest wonderful we'll have that information on tvliving.com as well dr david thank you again so much happy mental health awareness uh, month to you and just thank you even more for, for the work that you do we're so grateful well, thank you for thanks. your time thanks thank you